everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, it's Resurrection Sunday. Come on and stand to your feet. We're going to take a minute right here to thank God for a risen Savior. Anybody thankful that you have a risen Savior on this morning? A Savior that's not dead, but he's alive. He is alive and well. And God, we say thank you, Father, for being such a good God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Anybody excited about Jesus on this morning? He didn't have to get up, but he did it for you, and he did it for me, so that's enough to say thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We don't take it for granted, Father, that you're here with us, so thank you, God. Come on, let's lift it up to him.
Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. Come on, give him another praise in the house. Amen. Amen. The lamb that was slain, he's alive. Amen. Hallelujah. He got up today. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no one like you, Lord. No one greater than you. No one higher than you. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Hallelujah, yeah, yeah. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lamb that was slain, he's alive. Forever he shall reign. He's alive. Come on. They crucified him at Calvary, but he rose. say upon him and you say he's alive and that's all we're going to declare today he's alive with our power in his hand amen hallelujah hallelujah glory god glory god come on come on hallelujah here we go the lamb that was slain he's alive that's it come on forever he shall reign He's alive. They crucified him at Calvary, but he rose in victory. He's alive. He's alive. That's it. He's alive. He's alive. Come on. He's alive. With all power in his head. Jesus is alive.
him glory if you know it. Come on, hallelujah. Does it mean anything to you? Hallelujah, that he's alive. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Does God. anybody love God on this morning? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Does anybody have a love for Jesus on this morning? Come on, we just going to take some time to love on him. Because he didn't have to do it, but he did.
Praise God. Do you really love him this morning? Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 We like to take this time to thank you for coming out to be with us today, to worship with us this morning. Amen. And if you, if you have never been here before, or maybe it's been a long time since you've been here, we're going to ask that you would stand so we can recognize you. Amen. If that's you, if you haven't been here in a while, or maybe this is your first time, or it's been a long time since you've been here. Amen. Do we have any this morning? Amen. We're all family. Put your hands together for family. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. We're a little crowded this morning. We're going to ask everybody to stand up, fist bump, high five somebody, tell them glad to see you here today. Say, let's rejoice in it. Amen. Hey, tell another neighbor, look at him and say, Resurrection Day brought us together. Yeah, because he lived, we all came together. Amen. We came to celebrate him this morning. Amen. How many of you really, truly do love him and you owe him all of the praise to still be here? So, won't you take another moment? Take a moment in your space and give God a praise that you are still here. started out for sunrise this morning. Amen. And, and glory to God. How many of y'all was blessed from that this morning? Amen. Only a couple of you. Amen. And we still moving. Amen. I was preparing in the bike and I tell with Sonda, I like to have so y'all can keep up with me with the notes. And some reason or another, I pushed the wrong button when I was sending to her and erased everything. So I said, now Lord, do this mean you giving me something new? I do this mean I just messed up. Do I blame the devil? Do I blame what is it? Just I messed up, amen? So that means ain't no telling what time y'all can get out, amen? Because she ain't got no notes to keep up with me. So she normally can guide me and let me know, Pastor, you oh, now nah, we can go all day, amen? I'm just kidding. Praise God, amen? I ain't kidding about the notes, though, but we won't go all day. Praise God. We do thank God for each and every one of you. Ladies, see, I've already welcomed you all. We appreciate you being here. We thank you for taking the time out to be a part of what the Lord is doing in this house. Amen. And we do not take that for granted. You could have picked anywhere else to be, but you chose to be here with us. So once again, peaceful, let's give everybody a hand that's joining us this morning. We appreciate you. Amen. Amen. 
I, I do have something, a couple of things I want to announce very quickly. First of all, on the 8th, on the 8th, on the 8th of, of next month, amen, I'm going to say it this month, but on the 8th of next month, April the 8th, glory to God, Sister Tina Brown, as you all know, Sister Tina, by, by a grieving class uh, group that get going to get together at that time beyond, amen, moving beyond, they're going to get together at that regular time at our house on the 8th. So make sure you mark your calendars in regards to that. All of the brethren, one of our goals this year is to have a fellowship, an honoring among the brethren. We're going to do that, and we're going to do that next month, and that's going to take place April the 20th. Am I right? April, yeah, they're giving me the nod. April the 20th, that's when that's going to take place, and we're going to do it at Bar, up in Bartow. Up there, we're going to all come together and have breakfast that morning, so we're going to start that up. I don't know what we're doing that at 8, 9. Somebody tell me. Tell me. Y'all tell me. 9. Oh, is it nine? Is it nine? Okay, I'm sorry. They telling me, see? They have to help me. Boy, they keep me going. I'm telling you. Such a blessing. So that's going to be at nine. At, <clears throat> that's going to be at nine. As the mic, Deacon Frank will be getting back with you with more information. So, Father, I want you to govern yourselves according to that. We all going to just come together, have some fellowship. That's one of our goals for this year, to do a couple of those. And we're going to do our first one. Make sure you mark your calendar. For April the 20th. Amen. It is giving time. Let's give the Lord a praise if you would as we prepare to give. I'm handing that. Amen. Give it. Come on. Hand it. Praise God. Amen. It's time to give. <laughs> Amen. The word of God says, for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son. Amen. I think he is a perfect example of what a good giver is. Amen. And as we get ready to give this morning, he gave his best, so we're going to give our best this morning. Amen. Amen. We're going to prepare to give. Amen. And we're going to give our best just as God gave his best. He gave his only begotten son. That was the best he had. That's all he had. And he sacrificed it. He gave it just for us. Amen. So that we can have a more abundant life. And I'm thankful and grateful to God for that. Amen. So we're going to get ready to give. As you give, you think about all that God has done for you and all that you anticipate him doing for you. Amen. 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 We're going to look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do bless you. We praise you. We do magnify your name. God, we thank you once again, Father, for this time of giving. God, we don't take this for granted. We thank you, God, for all your many blessings, God, that you have bestowed upon us. And Father God, as an act of our, our gratitude towards you, God, we bring our tithes and our offerings into the storehouse, God, out of obedience to your word. And Father God, we are excited about what you're going to do in our finances. God, we're believing you for more in our finances in the name of Jesus, God, so that we can be a blessing to this ministry and we can be a blessing to others. We thank you, oh God, and we believe by faith that the budget will be met. It is a done deal in Jesus' name. And we thank you, God. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor for everything that will be given here this morning. We praise your most holy name. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hadn't heard that one in a while, amen. Amen. But his blood is wonderful, amen. It saves, it cleans, it heals. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise and glory for the blood. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength.
That's it. From day to day. Thank you, Lord. It will never Praise team a hand for a job well done this morning. Get out your Bibles and stand with me. Easy book to find, Genesis, the third chapter. Everybody can find that book. As you find it, you please stand. If you don't know where Genesis is, ask your neighbor. Genesis chapter 3. Beginning at verse 1, y'all there? I'm reading out of the New King James, that's what she got on the screen, the New King James. It says, now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, have God indeed said you should not eat of every tree of the garden? Look at the next verse. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. What? Next verse. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of Amen. Of the God. God have said, you should not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Verse 5. For God for God knows that in the day, this is the serpent talking. This is what the devil was saying. In the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. Not in the image of God now. Like God. You are no good and evil. You want to be smart. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for fruit, that it was pleasure to the eyes. Tell your neighbor, everything that looked good ain't good. Word of God talks about the lust of the eye. Look at this. She seen it. It was pleasure to the eyes. And a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit. Amen. She ate. And then she also, she said, it's good, baby. Huh? Here goes something for you. She gave something to her husband. Amen. And he ate. Now everybody eat. Everybody in the garden. And wasn't nobody in the garden but Adam and Eve. Amen. 
than, than the eyes of both of them. Both of them was open. And they knew they was naked. All of a sudden, they were, I'm naked. So what they did, they went and got some fig trees, leaves, and they sewed them together. And they made themselves, not just a key word, they made themselves a covering. They tried to cover up what they did. I know ain't none of us never been there before. I know you ain't never tried to cover something. Or you tried to get the job done your own self. And the word of God says in verse 8. And they heard the sound of the Lord God. Walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees in the garden. Can y'all slide down with me called the time? And let's look at verse 15. I think y'all got the picture, right? Y'all see it? Oh, y'all don't see it? The Lord told them not to do something. They did it. And because of what they did, sin entered into the world. And in verse 15, now, first of all, we call the time. At the time, this snake was tall and upright talking. And we can't picture that because we never seen a snake standing. Because by the time we got a chance to see a snake, it was on the ground. But here in Genesis, the Lord, the God had told him, from this day forward, you will always be on the ground. Say, so you will be below all the other cattle. You will always be on the ground. And then he said this. He said, I'm going to put image between you and the woman. In other words, say you and the woman are going to always be in battle. And between your seed and her seed. Wait a minute. A woman can't have her own seed. The seed is in a man. But God said between your seed and her seed. This is what your seed going to do. This is what's going to happen with her seed. It's going to bruise your head. Not the word bruise that means. It's going to bust your head wide open. If we was talking, we would say it's going to bust into the white meat. Tell you, neighbor, going to bust into the white meat. Going to bust into the white meat. So he said, Yo, see, going to bust his head to the white meat. And say, now, nah, you're going to do some damage, but you just going to hurt his heel. You can hit me on my heel all you want, but if I can keep hitting you in the head, I got you. While you're standing, turn with me to Matthew real quick. The 28th chapter. Y'all okay? Let's start at verse 1 there also. Ooh, glory. Now after the Sabbath, now after the Sabbath, as the first day, everybody say the first day. First day. Everyone say the first day. first day. Of the week, everybody say begin the done. So meaning, hear what it's talking about, but Brent, they, whatever's happening was happening in the dark, but the light was about to come. Some of y'all will get that later. It started in the dark, but it says right after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to done, a new day was coming in. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. Y'all with me? And look at the next verse. Verse 2 says, now while it was there, it reminded us when they went to look in, something took place. We read this to you this morning, right? And behold, there was a great earthquake. An angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled by this big old stone, stone from a door. What door? The door of the tomb. The grave of Jesus. And the angel sat on it. Y'all with me? Y'all still here? 
and his countenance, talking about the angel, it was like lightning. And he was clothed in all white, white as snow. And the guards, they shook for fear of him, of the angel. And they became paralyzed like dead men. They couldn't even move. Y'all still with me? But the angel answered and said to the women, don't be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was, who was. Somebody tell your neighbor, he surely died. He surely died. He was crucified. I mean, he was killed. The worst death. He was killed, right? Guess what? And he was, wait a minute. He was killed. He was placed in this tomb. But guess what? He ain't here. He is risen. As he said. Put a pen in as he said. Because I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to say some stuff to you today. And I want to remind you, I always keep my word. Tell your neighbor, he never, ever go back on his word. Go ahead, tell him. Tell somebody he always keeps his word. Come see the place. You heard the angel Angel told him, y'all come on in now. Come on in the tomb and see the place where the Lord lay. Meaning, this way he was at. Y'all still here? Hold on, one more verse. Look at verse 7. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he's gone before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Now, hold on before you sit. In Genesis, we see something happen on that day. On that day, we see where they did Adam and Eve was in the perfect garden, in the perfect place, and they disobeyed God. And because of that, sin entered into the world. That's why you go right now, some things you, don't, you know ain't right, but you still do it. Some things you try not to do because you know it ain't right, but you find yourself doing it. Anybody in the house go through that? Every one of us here have sinned. And it all started back in Genesis. That day, right? But then when we go to Matthews, we see this day. So what I want to deal with this morning, real simple to easily remember, what a difference a day makes. You may be seated. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what a difference a day makes. I'm going to try and give you this introduction without crying, but this hit me, this particular subject message for Easter about two, three weeks ago. I could tell you the exact date. It hit me on March the 11th. Well, I know many of you all in the church, that's your birthday. It hit me that day. And it hit me really on the 12th. But what happened on the 11th, and then what I seen happen on the 12th, is what helped me to see this. On the 11th, I was leaving my house to go to my mom. And I got a call, and the call said, hey, cuz, I was just calling you to let you know to buy this pad. And they asked, said, Teresa asked, had y'all called pastor? And then I get a call 
to say that my Aunt Emma is at my mom's, and she don't know. And we want you to tell her. So I pull up to the house, and I small talk so I can lead to get to it. And so as we were sitting there, we was talking. I was just her, my grandmother, my Aunt Betty, and Emma twin. Sitting there, we talking. The preacher was sitting there. She hit me. I, like, when you going to say something? I'm waiting to find that right time. Because I know during this time, it's hard to find the right time. So I wanted to make sure, so I got up and walked out like I had received the call. That's to gather myself to pray again. Then I came back in and I shared it. I said, Emma, I had to tell her, and then Emma lost it. She lost it. It it's bad. French was hugging her. We was trying to hold her. In the meantime, my Aunt Betty, my grandmama, now they losing it, cover their sister. So my Aunt Betty get up and just begin to walk. My grandmother sat there, and she kept crying because Aunt Emma was crying. She kept saying, Emma, Emma, Emma. So she, and, and she was trying to reach out to touch her. And I know that went on for a good 30 minutes, babe, trying to calm and Emma down. Never really got calm, but it got better. Hang in here with me. That was March 11. March the 12th, I was at my mom's house. And we was doing our usual, we was eating and everything, and Ain't Emma come in the house. But this wasn't the same Ain't Emma I had seen the previous day. And it hit me. What a difference a day makes. Some of y'all don't feel what Pastor trying to show you. At that moment, when she heard that, now, I'm not saying on the 12th it was all gone. The pain was all still there, but what a difference a day makes. And this morning, what I'm trying to say to every one of us in here, I don't care how dark your day might be today, but Lord, just help me get through the day. I don't know what the future holds, Lord. But if I can get through this day, I just believe my next day going to be, oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. So I thought about it. I thought about it. That the Lord don't deal in time. He, what you mean, Pastor? No, he, he don't deal in time. Because he's sovereign. He's all-knowing. So church, what he do, he deal with us. Because we're in time. But God himself, there's no time on our. See, but I don't get it. Yeah, yeah, I, I know it. Let, let me bring it down because I'm not a deep preacher. What I'm trying to show you is that you might feel it this time. Because the way I'm at right now, what I'm going through, Lord, where you at? When you going to help me? God, like, I got this. But in the fullness of time, when I know it's right, I work this out for you. Your thing is you can't give up until that day makes a difference in your life. Anybody in the building feeling what I'm trying to tell you? Tell your neighbor, oh, what a difference a day makes. Oh, what a... And tell somebody else, God ain't forgot about you. God ain't forgot about you. Can I boldly tell you? He has a plan. 
He has a plan. Now, Genesis, Genesis, I explained it as we went through because of time. But can I take you back to chapter 1 and verse 1? In the beginning, the creator, amen, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's what it says, right? And then it goes to tell us what he did every day. On the first day, y'all familiar with that, right? And everything when he got through creating it, with it all, he said it was good. Yeah, yeah. When he separated the waters from, from, from the land, he said it's good. When he created that animal, he said it is good. Amen. Y'all with me? When he got to the sixth day and he got through creating us, man, he said, this is very good. Because now then he said, it is not good for man to be alone. So he put out in the sleep, took one of Adam's ribs and created Eve and God was pleased. But he did this on different days. Hang in here with me. On different days he did it. He had something he did the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day. Y- y'all see me. Y'all, well, I don't get it, Pastor. It don't matter what day you in. God say, I can work in that day. Because I am the creator. You is the creature. I got you. I know because you're having a blue Monday, you can't see yourself making it to Friday. But God say, i carry you through this. Because I am the creator of the day. Matter of fact, the scripture says, this is the day. Oh, y'all to hear me? Let me tell this side. This is the day. No, uh uh-uh, what day? Somebody got it, somebody got it. Let me tell you, this is today. What day you got? Today. Tell you that this is your nine day, this is your nine day. This is the day that the Lord has made. So if he can make a day, This is the day. This day. He made this day. So if he can make a day, he can keep you in the day. So he say, this, the scripture says, this is the day Lord made. So let us be glad in it and rejoice. This is the day the Lord has made. Let's be glad in it. Y'all ain't heard me. Not the way some of y'all looking. You couldn't have heard that verse. It says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Be glad in it. Don't matter what's happening in the day. Tell your neighbor, you got to stay glad. You got to stay glad. What keep me glad is because I know who made the day. It's the day maker. It is the day maker that keep me from losing my mind. It's the day maker keep me from giving up. It is the day maker that pushes me to look for the next day because of the day maker. Look at your neighbor and say, he made this day. He made this day. So I so believe he got me. He got me. So guess what I'm going to do in this day? Rejoice. I'm glad I'm still here. Anybody glad? Anybody glad? The Bible says be glad. Rejoice and be what? Glad in it. Tell your neighbor, you ain't going to kill this. I'm glad to be alive. I'm glad to be alive. The pain here, the hurt is here, the disappointment, Stuff I can't figure out. I don't know why I'm going through it. But I ain't asking why. I'm just saying when. When what? When he going to bring me out? Because any day now, any day now, that the maker of the day is going to get me through this day. So what I do, I'm just being glad in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. I'm not overlooking the problem. 
I ain't lost my mind just because I ain't let this thing take me out. Believe me, I struggle with it. Believe me, it's very painful. Believe, past. it's been painful for me almost every day since March the 4th. It's been painful, but through it all, through it all, to understand that the maker of the day, I got, he got you. He got you. Now listen, so we see that in Genesis, how he, the days he created, and what he created on those days. But then when we get to chapter 3, we see what I call the fall. It's the fall. The fall of man. Because man sinned. They, he, they listened. She listened, passed it on, and she sinned. And so because of that, the first thing, because of their sin, they recognized it, they tried to cut it up. Follow me? Church, you cannot save yourself. All of us are mess. All of us have sinned, come short of the glory of God. Even before you got saved, you were sinning. And we still right now have to deal with some things. We still find ourselves falling short after we, am I in the right building? You, you, you know what the problem is? Let me tell you, ladies, what the problem is. It's that tree that went over some of y'all head. I'm not a deep preacher. The tree that he put in the middle, it's that tree because what that tree represents is temptation. And it's there. Now, don't forget, because I didn't tell you, also there was a tree in there, the tree of life. So after they fell, you know what God did to them? He kicked them out the garden. And then what he did, he put some angels in each entry place of the garden, according to the word of God, that had swords that went this way, this way, that way. Why? So they couldn't get back in. Because after they fell, they wanted to go back in, and they would eat from the tree of life and be able to live eternally. But God was saying, no, I can't let you in because you don't messed up. Because you have sinned, you can't come back in. Because you have sinned, you cannot come back in. But tell somebody, oh, what, what a difference. Tell somebody, oh, what a difference. Oh, what a difference that they make. He say, this day you can't come back up in here. But can I tell y'all something? Before he put them out, y'all overlooked verse 15 of the third chapter. Before he kicked them out of it, you know what he told them? Hear me. Snake, you're going to have a battle on your hand. You and the woman and the seed of this woman are going to always be fighting. And snake, this seed going to bust your head wide open to the white meat. Now, you going to hit his heel, but it's going to bust your head wide open. And then he told them, now, y'all get on out of here. Y'all get out of the garden. Now, now, seem like, seem like, come on, Lord, what we going to do now? And the other question, Brother Brandon, why would you put that tree in there? And you all knowing, and you knew Adam and Eve was going to do this. Come on, God. Why you ain't just make it easy? Woo. Look at your neighbor and say, he has a plan. He has a plan. Don't let this day rob you of realizing what a difference a day makes. Because of the creator of the day, he had a plan. Get your Bibles out so I can get Sean the chance because she didn't get to deep this because I erased all my notes. All right, Galatians chapter 4. I want to look at 4, and then I'm going to come back and look at 5. But 4 fit here. He has a plan. They're out of the garden now. They cannot get back in the garden because of sin. And now every one of us, when we're born, we're born because of what they did. Every one of us is born a sinner. Look at your neighbor with a smile and tell him, every one of us, you too. 
I don't care if you don't live in a bubble, you ain't never cussed, you ain't never fussed, you ain't never did nothing wrong, you never lied to your parents, you ain't never did nothing. You always did everything right. You still was born a sinner. And because you was born a sinner, I need you to recognize something. Not only when we talk about what happened in this garden, and we say, man, fell and sin entered in, something else happened. I need a couple of you brothers real quick. Come on, real quick. Jamal, can you come real quick? I need to come up here so they can see. Not only we know sin, so the moment sin entered in, The moment sin in an end, I re- everybody say this for play, play. I represent God. I'll let you know. This is for play, play. So what ended up happening when sin in an end, man and God became separated. Go a little further on. Right there. Now reach out to try to touch each other. They, they covered themselves, but the covering couldn't bring them back to God. They were still separated. Y'all with me now, right? Because of sin, they were separated. And so the Lord now kicked them out of the garden, and it seemed like they got a problem. Because when they got kicked out, they got kicked out separated from God. They was no longer connected with God. In church, when you was born, you was born separated from God. That's why Nick at night, y'all remember Nick at night? What was Nick at night? Nicodemus that came to Jesus at night and said to Jesus, what must a man, oh, y'all ain't no Nick at night. He came at night and said, what must I do to be born again? And Jesus told him, you know, you must be born again. Nicodemus said, how can I go back in my mother's womb and be born again? He said, that is born of the flesh is flesh, but that is born of the spirit is spirit. This is a spiritual thing. You can't put leaves on you. You can't cover up your own self. You ain't good enough to save yourself. But Galatians 4.4 4 said, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son. And what his son did, born, wait a minute, Genesis 3.15. The seed of a woman, born of a woman. He sent somebody that was born of a woman. All of us was born, no, you missing it. There was no man involved. This was the Holy Ghost. Got inside of Mary and got Mary pregnant. No man, every, every one of us in here, whether you hate your daddy, never knew your daddy, it was your daddy and your mama. It was not just your mama. She might have pushed you out, but it was your daddy that put your seed, you, in your mama. And then from that, you grow and your mama pushed you out. And guess what? You want to know who your dad is? You check the blood. Because your daddy's blood is in you. Not your mama blood. Your daddy blood. Now listen, when Jesus was born, he came forth. Joseph's blood wasn't in Jesus. It's the Holy Ghost blood. It's the Father's blood that's on the inside. That's why they were singing what they were singing. The blood never lose its power. If it had been Joseph's blood, it couldn't do nothing. Because Joseph's blood would be defiled just like our blood. But it was the father's blood that got in Mary. When? At the fullness of time. God sent forth this son. Born of a woman, 
born under the law. Y'all may be seated. What for? To redeem those who was under the law. That we might receive. That we might receive. Tell somebody, I've been adopted. I've been adopted. <laughs> oh, you better say that. Because that's the only way you can get in there. Only way you get into the family of God is by adoption. You can't come in there on your own. You got to be adopted. That we might receive the adoption as what? Sons. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a child of God. I'm a Tell somebody, I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. Now, the word of God say, let the redeem of the Lord say so. Come on. I said, let me say, the Lord, the word says, let the redeem of the what, Lord? Say so. So if you've been redeemed, won't you say so? Give him some thanks for it. So that was the fall. That was the fall. They fell on that day. But can I tell y'all about some other folks? I'm about done. Can I tell you about some folks? And about how a day makes a difference? I know a man, according to the word, he slept, he went to sleep a shepherd, but he woke up a king. What a difference a day makes. Some of y'all will get that tomorrow. David laid down a shepherd boy. David went and fought Goliath, just a shepherd boy. But that day came. He moved from being a shepherd boy to end up becoming a king. Look at your neighbor and say, what a difference a day makes. Can I tell you, I know a man that laid down in prison, but woke up in a palace. Joseph said, tell him about me. Tell him about me. Tell him what a difference a day will make. Say, I was locked up, forgot about, interpret a dream, and now I'm sitting up in this palace calling the shots. What a difference. What a difference a day made. I know a woman that woke up and said, I got an issue. I can't stop bleeding. I can't have children. They don't even want me out. She woke up like that. But she touched the hymn of Jesus God. And on that day, that day, the word of God said, everything dried up. And she became healed. She woke up sick and didn't have any more money. She said because she had used all the money to get better. But when she touched Jesus, she left there healed. I don't think y'all still understand what I'm trying to show you. Oh, what a difference. A day mate. Ten men walking, but they got a problem. They was all together because they weren't allowed to be around nobody else. Because they had souls all over their bodies. Different limbs of their body was dropping off because of this disease they had called leprosy. They couldn't be around anyone. And they recognized Jesus. And from a far distance, they called out to Jesus. And Jesus said, keep on walking. Go on to the priest and show yourself. And on their way, the word of God said they got healed. They got cleansed. And what I'm trying to say to you, they woke up with leprosy, but praise God, that day, they got their healing. I hear another man in my ear say, tell him about me. I woke up blind. I couldn't see a thing. I could hear, but I couldn't see. And I heard Jesus was coming by. And I said to him, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me this day. And that day, he wasn't blind no more. It is some of y'all in here right now. You know you woke up one way, but before that day ended, God had did something for you. Tell somebody, I'm one of them folks. I'm one of them folks. 
Yeah, I'm one of them folks that know what a difference a day late. I'm almost there. Now, we talked about the fall. I talked about folks that started one way but ended up another way. But can I tell you the fix? How does my day get fixed? Let me tell you about the fix. Last Sunday, last Sunday we talked about the entry. Palm Sunday. How Jesus walked into, how he walked into Jerusalem and they laid down the palms. And how they said, Hosanna, Hosanna. Remember that? That was last Sunday. That was Sabbath. We talked about it. Then you keep on traveling with him. This was his, I told you last week, this was his last week. We call it the Passion Week. And he was heading, he was heading to Calvary. The fix, the fix was heading to Calvary. They called him king, but this king was finna die. They thought that politically he was finna change everything. So they was excited, and they was calling him the king. But he reminded them, because what he was riding on, y'all got this backwards. Because a king would normally come in on a horse. He didn't come in on a horse. He came in the lords of the horses. He came in on a donkey. And here he is on a donkey, but he's the king. Then it says he went into the temple. And he cleansed out the temple. This is the fix. He cleaned out the temple. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And he'll give us a good cleansing. All you got to do is ask him to clean you. He'll cleanse you. While other folks judge you, he's steady cleaning you. He'll see all the dirt on you, but if you ask him for forgiveness, he'll clean you up. Other folks saying how bad you look. And he's saying, that's okay, baby. I'm cleaning you. I'm cleaning you. I'm doing a work on you. Don't be moved by what everybody else say. Just stay on my wheel. And if you stay on my wheel, recognize I got my hands on you. Tell your neighbor the Lord ain't took his hands off of you. Tell him, tell your neighbor he'll clean you up. Then he worked his way. He ran into some controversy. While he was in the temple, he was in that temple. He was teaching, ran to some controversy. Now that's on Tuesday. Now we get to Wednesday, and everything kind of settles because this preparation time. He don't have what we did this morning. He don't have communion now. He don't have communion with the one that's going to be betraying all of them around the table. He getting ready to die, and he having communion with them. And he said, "This is the last time we eat together. This is my body. Eat ye all of it. This is this is my blood. Drink y'all of it." He don't have all of that. And now all of a sudden, guess what? Now we moving closer to it. Now we got Thursday. Now Thursday, y'all still with me, right? Can I tell you about the fix? Now we're at Thursday. And now all of a sudden, they're accusing him. Now they're moving him from hallway to hallway. To, to, now they're accusing him. And guess what? Now all of a sudden, it's Friday. It's Friday. Now I don't know, some of y'all struggle with this. We call it Good Friday. How is it Good Friday? But it's Friday, but guess what he's doing? He's hanging on a cross now. He's hanging there. He, yeah, he got a crown on, a thorns, and he's bleeding, and he's hanging there. They mock him. They talk about that. The word of God teaches us when you study it up, they beat him so bad you can't recognize him. But he's hanging there. And somebody hanging there with him saying, come on, if you really who you say you is, won't you step on down? Save, save yourself and save us too. Nah, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, I'm the fix. And since I'm the fix, I have to stay here and take this. I don't think y'all feel him, Pastor. He had to take this, church. The sacrifice was for me and you. Look at your name and say, I'm glad he didn't get down. I'm glad he didn't get down. No, no, I'm glad he stayed. He stayed. 
Yeah, he stayed. Yeah, he stayed. Because sin will keep you out. And he want to get you in. And the only way you can get in, somebody had to pay. Because the wages of sin is death. And the only way you can get redeemed is by the shedding of blood. Let me slow down before you miss it. Leaves can't cover you. Animals can't cover you. He said, take some blood of a lamb. Behold, the lamb of God that cometh to take away the sin of the world. Look at him hanging there Friday. What a difference a day makes. Some of you all in your darkest time right now, you hanging on to some stuff that's hard. Some of y'all going through some painful things right now. Look at your neighbor and say, it's just Friday. Tell them it's just Friday. Yeah, tell, oh, y'all didn't get it. Did you tell somebody, it's just Friday. It's Friday. Yeah, this is a fi Friday experience. But guess what? Tell somebody else, Sunday coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no, they didn't believe me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I know all the pain, all the hurt. All the disappointment, all the problems you're dealing with right now, tell your neighbor that's your Friday. Tell them that's your Friday. But tell them, Sunday coming. Sunday is a coming. Because what a difference a day makes, amen? Sunday coming. Yes, it's Friday right now. Yes, I feel like giving up. Yes, I feel like quitting. Yes, I'm mad. And the truth be told, I'm mad with God too. But that's Friday. Sunday is a coming. So guess what I'm doing in this day? In my Friday. Don't forget what I told you in the beginning of the message. He made the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. What day? Friday. The painful Friday. He made this day still. The hurting Friday. So this is the day. I will rejoice and be glad in it. He died on Good Friday. He died, church. He died. He sure enough died. And I'm glad for it. Because he died. No, I'm glad for it. I can deal with what I had to deal with on March 4th, on March 11th, because he died. Because he died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank God for Good Friday. Tell you, neighbor, that's why I'm good. That's why I'm good. That's why I'm good. That don't mean you ain't going through that. That don't mean you ain't got no pain. But tell somebody, but I'm good, though. I'm good, though. Tell them why. Tell them because of Good Friday. Because of Good Friday. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know this don't look good. It don't feel good. I can't figure it out. But you know what? I'm still good. Why? Because of Good Friday. He died. Now, Saturday, we call Silent Saturday. Because we ain't hearing nothing. Ain't nothing going on on the earth. But there's something going on. It's just not on the earth. Now it's down there. Now it's down there underneath all this. The word of God tells us. Underneath all this, there's a fight going on. Who is the fight? The seed of that woman. Now he, they don't bury him. Y'all with me now? They don't bury him. And now he's down there fighting who? That serpent, that devil. And the word of God tells us he took the keys. What? The keys. Yeah, yeah. The devil has some keys. The keys to what? Death and the grave. He had the keys into life. He had the keys. Whoever had the keys had the authority. The devil had the keys. But I love what the brother said. But death died. Glory to God. Death died this day. Yes, death had the keys. And they down there wrestling and fighting in the midst of all this. Jesus trying to get the key. And all of a sudden, the devil asking death, how you giving him all this? He, De death, I thought you had him. I thought you can hold it. Death say, it's hard to hold him. 
He's different than Abraham. He's different than Isaac. He's different than Jacob. He's different than David. He's different than Elijah. He ain't the same as all of them. Death say I can't hold him. It's something about him. I tell you what's about him. He's the seed of a woman. He got all God in him. Death thought he had him. Grave said, Death, you got it? Death called Grave back and said, We got a problem. What's the problem? I'm dying. I am dying. Grave said, What? I'm dying. You, Death, I am dying. I hear you. Death ain't dead. Yes, he is. The word of God say death lost this thing. We as believers, what happened? We don't die, we sleep away. We sleep with expectation of opening up our eyes again. My mama ain't died, she just went to sleep. The Bible just went to sleep. Wait, this the fix. Friday. Ain't I know? Great. Death say, I, I don't die. I don't lost my authority. Grave? You got a problem. Because the grave, the tomb, can't hold it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Somebody coming. Who coming? Who coming? Mary Magdalene coming. And the other Mary. Why? I tell you why. Because for them, Saturday is Sabbath. And they wasn't allowed to work on Sabbath. So they got up early. Early. Real early. The next day. They started out dog. It's dark, pitch dark. And they saying, we need to go down there. Soon as Sabbath's over, early the next morning, but I say 11, 12 at night, they trying to get down to that tomb. You know how y'all scared of the graveyard. <laughs> the child, no. You can't point at the graveyard, you got to bite your finger. I know y'all remember all that. These younger folks, they know what I'm talking about. Y'all my age and older, y'all know what I'm talking about. Scared of the graveyard. But they was heading there. And it's dark. It's real dark. And guess what they're wondering? Who gonna move that stone? Because they put a stone there. And they got some guards there. They ain't gonna help us. How are we gonna get to him? Church, can I remind you? He said, I got you. Things seem dark for you now. You trying to figure out how you going to do it? And he already got an answer. Tell your neighbor, he working on that. He working on it. Tell him, you just keep on walking by faith. Tell him, keep on walking. Notice what they did. Notice. They couldn't figure it out, but they never stopped. They kept, oh, some of y'all will get that tomorrow. They still kept coming. Some of you, you stop when you can't figure it out. You don't know how it's going to change. Tell your neighbor, you got to keep walking. You got to keep walking. How do you walk? By faith. Tell somebody, by faith. By faith. Tell them, tired. Say, tired, but keep going. Say, frustrated, but keep on walking. Anybody in this building frustrated? Anybody ever been tired before? What you got to do? Pick them up and put them back down. Pick them up. What I'm saying? Pick up the word of God. Pick up prayer. Pick up praise. Put it back down. Pick it back up. And keep walking by faith. And when they got there, when they got there, the word of God said, it was the breaking of the day. The new day came in. Y'all got it? Y'all see it yet? What a difference. A day made. They get there. 
Now the sun coming. It's rising. See, but before it can rise, as a might, it has to set. There's some things you worrying about. He just got it sitting. But when the S-O-N rise, that that was there goes down. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all ain't ready for me. Darkness move when the S-O-N come up. And the thing, whatever you're dealing with, the problem, you got to get the S-O-N to rise up in your situation and the darkness to go. Light and darkness cannot be in the same place. The moment light come on, darkness go to running. So you got to make sure that you let the light, the S-O-N, come up. And church, when they got there, the stone was rolled away. The angel was sitting on it. And church, this is the finish. One of my guys said to me just this morning that they just told, and I said, that's the end of my message, man. They just told somebody, it ain't how you start. It's how you finish. See, and in the middle, you got to be determined not to give up. Told him, hell is real. And so in the middle, and saying the way you finish, get in a good church where you can be fed the word of God. He said, I ain't telling you where to go, but you need to go somewhere where you can be fed the word so you can finish. Church, the fixer became the finisher. Because when they got there, when they got there, guess what the angels say? It's finished. It's done. What? He gone. He ain't here. I know you're looking for him. Yes, he, yes, he experienced Friday. Yes, everything was silent on Saturday. But guess what? Early this morning, he got up. He is risen. Tell somebody he finished that thing. He finished it. Tell him, tell him just like he finished that thing. Oh, what a difference. A day man. We started this message in Genesis and it didn't look good. But we finished it up because the day changed. I like to say it like this. Oh, what a day. Oh, what a day when he finished that thing. Oh, what a day when it declared he has risen indeed. I ain't got to worry about tomorrow because he lives. Because he lives. I can face Tomorrow, oh, what a day. You got Monday, you have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But you also have your day. Your day. And the Lord want me to say to you as I quit, oh, what a difference a day made. Your day. As long as you're living and breathing, there is hope. So you got to start declaring, this is my day. Now, how do you get that sun to rise? I'm going to tell you how we rise the sun. By raising our hands. When we rise and praise him, he shows up. You got to get a praise in you where he shows up in you on behalf of you. But you have to keep reminding yourself. This is our watch word. I watch scripture for this week, all week long, rest of this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be in it because he finished it all. Let's give him a praise. Come on, bless his name. Come on, right there in your space. Come on, right there. Let's begin to raise. Raise up if you would, please. Everybody that's able to. 
I want you in your own way. Everybody different. You ain't got to try to be like anyone, anyone else. But in your own way, let's raise up a praise to him in this house. That's it. Come on. Come on. Come on, raise up. Praise him for your now that you're still here. Come on. That's it. Come on. Ah, come on. Let's worship him like you love him. I'm victorious because he won it for me. I said, that's Aunt Emma in there. They say, yeah. She was in there laughing. They was in there cutting up. But church, I didn't tell you. Lady C was a witness. My kids was there. We was all there. They'll tell you. During the time when I told you how hard she took it and she was screaming, she kept saying, Jesus! Jesus, she say, oh, Jesus, in that painful day, she was still saying, Jesus, and that's why I'm telling you, we say hallelujah, Jesus, in this day, I don't care what you looking at, I don't care what you facing, it's hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. Church, you have to do it crying. Lord, you have to call on him hurt. When you don't feel like it, you still got to know how to call on Jesus. When nobody else can help you, you have to understand Jesus always there. That's it. That's it. Come on, let's do it right now. Right where you at. Your deliverance coming. Your breakthrough coming. Because you're opening up your mouth just calling out his name. You might not know how to pray like everybody else call out those words. But it's in the name of Jesus. Everything must bow. Sickness, death, everything in the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Get your breakthrough right now.
God, we love you. We appreciate you and we recognize it's all about you. So if there's anybody in this building that don't know you, I pray you would touch them right now. For those that's listening to us on the live screen, are you listening on the replay? There's a number coming up on that screen. You dial, you text that number. You say salvation. Somebody will be there. That, that, yeah, that number, that 561 number you see right there. <clears throat> 9445578. Somebody will be there. For y'all that's in this business, say, Pastor Cornelius, I'm not a Christian. I'm not born again. But I want to make Jesus Lord of my life. I want the fixer. He's here for you right now. Slip your hand up in there. I want to pray for you. Let's be praying. That's it. That's it, saints. Be praying. Well, let's give him a praise offering all over this building. Oh, look at you. Find about three people in your neighborhood real quick and say, oh, what a difference that they made. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Find three more people that look a little bit happier than those three. And say, I'm telling you, oh, what a difference a day made. Amen. 